come to my mind. We had a great run of it. Uh, he's a great coach, and I'm uh, proud to have him as a friend and proud to have had the times that we had. We, we, uh, we just had a great experience. Question now? What? I've never, I've never been able to know why. Uh, I fucked it up. That, not just that, but anything else. <laughs> no, I can't answer those questions. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, who's taking this season hard. I'm talking real hard. He can't even look at you guys right now. He's so pissed off. We got Joe Bear, who's just chilling. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Jerry Jones is imploding. And before we get to that, let's open for business here and let's wake up the football guys who are literally embarrassed by this Dallas Cowboys team that has given up 167 points in four games, four games in a row in the NFL, a record which I don't think that anybody else out there has done. And literally having the worst home loss in Jerry Jones's 35 years, we look like some bull jiggity, some bullshit, some crap, some manure. Break out the biggest puma. I'm gonna tell you how big it is. I, I remember driving down to Dallas for the NFL draft. I think it was 2018 with my guys E2 Blue and DMV and everything else. And when we were going through Arkansas on the interstate, they had these giant piles of brush and things, okay? I, I guess it was brush. But what they looked like were giant poo emojis. That's what the Cowboys put on the field. A pile of, just, just like, I mean, it was like you know, 15 feet tall. That's the kind of bull crap that they dropped on the middle of the field. And I'm going to say, definitely, it may hurt the bottom line. Now, the tickets are already sold, you know, to, to the aftermarkets and things like that. The season tickets are out there. They got their money for the moment. But here's what I can tell you was, last week I was looking at the tickets for everybody who was, you know, looking to get the group package and things. I always kind of like to wait closer to the game because it seems like I get better deals. Looking last week... There weren't a lot of tickets other than the nosebleed, the upper section, the broke ass media spots. And those tickets were like 350 and up. And I'm not talking about 50 yard line. I'm talking about like corner of the end zone ones up there. And if you went down to the next level, it was like $600 a ticket. If you were just looking at the party pass last week before that game, they were $89. I looked yesterday because I'm still going to the Eagles game. And, you know, lo and behold, the party pass tickets dropped to $69. The upper level ones dropped from about $350 to about $250. I saw tickets lower level end zone for only $400. Clearly, people... You are making an effect on the Cowboys that people are sick of this stuff. Now, this morning, Jerry Jones, you know, <laughs> the owner of the Dallas Cowboys and many, 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 many other things. Um, forgive me, my arm's kind of mm, ooh, it's a little tight here. Owner of many, many things was on 105 The Fan, and he started going off with some of the questions. I believe Jerry Jones is losing his shit. He's losing his shit. I got everybody right now on X. They're, you know, they're like, Mark, go check out 105 The Fan. Jerry's threatening to get rid of, of, of everybody you know, for asking questions. He's literally telling them to, you know, to basically go to hell. 
Now, I started watching this, okay? I watched about the first 18 minutes of it. And, you know, it's a slow burn. Jerry's in there, you know, <laughs> hey, 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 you know, we the Cowboys and things. And, you know, sometimes you, you, we didn't do this and we didn't do that. But, you know, we're still a good team. And two, Sean and RJ, who, you know, of course, they call us the, the minions, the uh, morons, the Cowboys mafia and everything else and stuff. They started actually asking real questions. Now, you got to understand, the fan is kind of the cowboy thing, okay? And you got to understand that when you're the media credentialed people with the cowboys, you kind of have to toe the company line and make Jerry Jones look good. Help sell that, that giant turd that's on the middle of the field. Well, I want you guys to listen to this because it was like a slow burn and I, I hadn't even gotten to, to where he fired it yet. So I want to listen to it with you guys. This, this shit is wild. Let, let's go on here. And do their job within the role. That didn't happen the other day, and we paid the consequences for it. Mm -hmm. But I've seen the players do it. I know we have outstanding personnel, very outstanding personnel. We just made our quarterback the highest paid player in the NFL. We just topped the receiver list charts. So we made our bed relative to how we're going to approach with our key people uh, with the team. Uh, we were shorthanded out there uh, uh, on defense, but everybody gets shorthanded. That's really not an excuse in the NFL. Your depth should step up there, and you should be able, if you can, to compensate to some degree. You can't compensate for... Uh, the gap, so to speak, that we had between the way our offense played and the way we were supposed to play. Now, I'm going to give Detroit a lot of credit for that. They came after us and got after us, and they put guys on top of every offensive lineman you had, and they uh, came uh, came at it and uh, uh, put the kind of pressure that uh, gave Dak a lot of problems and gave our running game a lot of problems. We've got to be able to handle that. Jerry, I think the counter back when you said, where are you going to get the players? You can't get them this week is, and you, you're aware of, of all the Monte all Adams? topics. You, yeah, but what is your counter? What is your damn counter? My counter I is. I really want to know where you would go or go get it. Now, don't tell me about should gotten a guy in the off season. Why not? This isn't a damn word argument just mm -hmm. because I'm not arguing with you. I'm dealing with how we line up against San Francisco, not what I did wrong last week or last month or two months ago or two years ago. If I really gave you guys a list of all the things I've done wrong over the last We can probably years, give it to you. Uh, you couldn't be on this program for the next five years steady and go over it. But every now and then you do some right things, and at the end of the day you add it up, and the rights give you a better spot than the wrongs. But if you think for any minute right now, there'll be one Super Bowl champion. What do the others do wrong? There's one Super Bowl champion. Now, we want to be that champion. And I'm sure not throwing the towel in today because of what happened out there Sunday. But I'm not going to sit here and waste a lot of energy, a lot of time. Uh, let's talk about what I should have done back in 1907 or <laughs> 19, 2017. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I've got more time than that, and I actually don't even have time on this great show. <laughs> on this great show. It's a great show right now. Okay. So, Jerry, 1970, a little different from this past off season in building the team we're talking about today, which there was a lot of criticism that you guys didn't add, didn't spend, and don't add, and don't spend, or, and are not aggressive enough with some of the problems that are still haunting the Cowboys today that we see play out on the field. That That's the point of talking oh, about the offseason. Oh, oh, I remember Holy those shit. criticisms very well. Okay, so what? Are they playing out so to what? be accurate? What's your, what's your point? What's your point? My, my point is it seems like point? my point. Let me tell you what I'll do. Let me tell you what I'll do about it. Uh, I will uh, uh, let us sit down and look at the decisions we've made over the last several years. Okay, I'll look at it. Now, if you think I'm interested on a, on a damn phone call with you over a radio and sitting here and throwing all the good out with the dishwater, you have got to be smoking something over there this morning. <laughs> I'm not. And I really don't, and I don't even want our listeners to listen to me, uh, to talk about this is not your job. 
your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. Well, my job is to so ask why. Get a job, or I'll get another. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions, man. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, we're just we're we're we're, we're trying to figure out why the no, team no, is. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm hold, not... hold on, guys. Hold, hold the hold the hell on. Damn it, Devontae Adams. I don't believe this. Okay, as as we sit here right now, as we sit here right now, listening to Jerry Jones babbling about all the mistakes that he's made and this, that, and the other, and so on. And I said this all last week, all last week. I've been talking talking about this over and over and over and over and over again because I said we're going to be sick when Devontae Adams is traded and it's not going to be a number two pick. It might not be a three. It might be a fourth round that his price was dropping. And here it is right now, just happening right now. Devontae Adams traded to the Jets for a conditional third round pick. Third round pick. Now, Jerry Jones, you're up here talking about, you know, well, we can't, we, you know, we, I, I can't, can't, we can't find people at this point to help this team. If you were sitting here bragging and boasting about, we signed Dak, we signed CD, and that's you, you, that's your your whole thing to win a Super Bowl. You're stupid as shit. You're stupid as shit. Aaron Rodgers got Garrett Wilson over there. Aaron Rodgers got a real good defense. Aaron Rodgers got a good running attack. And guess what they said? It's not enough. Let's go out and get Devontae Adams. Let's go out and get Devontae Adams and add to the mix. We'll worry about the paying of him later on. Right now is our opportunity. We got Aaron Rodgers. We don't know how long we're going to have that guy there. As Dan Quinn said, Dan Quinn said, opportunities aren't always given tomorrow is not promised jerry jones you're 82 freaking years old you have opportunities you got a quarterback that can play but if you think that your quarterback and one target with the worst running game in the nfl and all this bullshit that you're saying right now oh we believe in mike mccarthy why yeah you know why you believe in dak prescott and mike mccarthy because they give you cover they give you cover and they give you an opportunity to be mediocre. And Jerry Jones, you're not willing to take a goddamn risk, which is kind of crazy, that you've got more money than you and, J and Stephen Jones and his great, 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 great grandkids could ever spend. We're the ones out there spending our money, giving it to you with this shit sandwich that you put on the field. And here it is, Devontae Adams traded for a third-round pick, and you picked up Trey freaking Lance for a fourth-round pick, and he'll never sniff the damn field. And paying him $5 million and then turning around saying, well, we couldn't afford Derrick Henry, when you wouldn't even pick up the damn phone. Yes, RJ and crew, they have the right to ask you these questions the same way we all do. We all need to question the shit that you do. This is crap. This is a shit sandwich that you keep serving to us and expect us to go ahead and say, we them boys, we the cowboys, you know, buy the clothes and things, be fashionable, have have all your rappers there and your your UF uh, uh, fighting guys and all and, and, and the big fights and stuff and everything else. We the cowboys and we ain't shit. We are not shit. We can't win in the freaking playoffs. We can't do it. And I don't blame. Here, here's the part about it here. Y'all going to look and say, it's the damn players. It's not just the players. It's not just the coaches. They are not given the damn tools to succeed. I can't build a house out of balsa wood. Except for a model one. You want to have primo? You got to get primo. And that costs you freaking money. And this penny pension bullshit, this ineptitude with taking care of the cap, this shit of we focused in on paying Dak and CD, and you took more damn time than anybody else out there, and you screw the pooch when you finally get it done. 
This whole bullshit of Stephen Jones being the president with a chemical engineering degree and a marketplace grill guy, marketplace grill trainer, server trainer, who has been working for the organization for all these years, 20 years of the ineptitude that you look around and say, well, maybe us paying guys like Michael Gallup with a torn ACL might not be a good idea. Maybe we should put them on a one-year deal and a prove-it deal. Maybe Jalen Smith, who had freaking drop foot, that maybe we should think about after one good season not paying him. Maybe, just maybe, instead of making Zeke wait until you get to desperation, you don't end up paying him the second most amount of money in the history of football and then have to eat that dead money. <sighs> Let's go back to the interview. I, I want to hear what else Jerry Jones has to say. You're not going to figure out it's uh, what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are, uh, or any five or ten like you, you need to come to this meeting I'm going to today. There are 32 teams here. You're geniuses. <laughs> Jerry, okay? it, it, y'all really think you're going to sit here with a microphone and tell me uh, uh, all of the things that uh, I've done wrong and without going over the rights? Now, listen, we both know we're talking to a lot of great fans and a lot of great listeners. And I am very sorry for what happened out there Sunday. I'm sick about what happened Sunday. Now, I'm not talking to these yahoos on the end of this phone. I'm talking to you, the fans that are listening this morning. And we can spend a lot of time going over zigging and zagging. One of the stupidest things I've ever done that anybody has ever analyzed is by the Cowboys. It was an idiot that did that. So idiot things can turn into good decisions. Okay? Smart things can turn into bad decisions. The facts are that when you make one, you don't really know whether it's going to be good or not at the time. So let's, let's just uh, go ahead. I'm trying to answer your questions, man. You want some you want some conversation this morning? You're getting it. <laughs> Jerry Jones here on the fan. Jerry, you worried about fan apathy setting in? <laughs> well, I'm not worried about fan apathy. If you saw the letters and things I'm getting, that's the last thing from apathy. You're seeing very, very keen, intense uh, uh, passion about what we're not doing and concern about what we're doing. And that's the reason that I love this thing. Is because what, you have pissing that fans kind of off? passion. I love the passion, and I'm nobody more passionate than our Dallas Cowboy fans. Now, I'll assure you, one nobody thing, more disappointed either. Know it. I'm not afraid to make decisions, and I can live with anything that we're talking about as far as criticism about those decisions. What I'm going to worry about is whether those decisions can pan out in a positive way. You've got a lot of reasons why they don't. And you've got a lot of teams up here looking around at some of the decisions they've made over the last few years. Just because everybody else is making bad decisions doesn't mean that justifies you making a bad decision. You say you so don't. We can, go into this. we can go into this. I'm saying what I'm saying. Don't tell me what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. You Do listen you? to what I'm saying. Jerry, why are you getting so mad at us? We're, we're just asking you why the blowouts are happening, the historical differences at home. We're just asking about it on behalf of the fans, and you're getting you're getting real ticked off and mad at us. We're just. At, you, you, I, I'm not. Hey, can I tell you something, guys? I don't get mad at people that I can not be with if I don't want to be with. I don't get mad. You're asking me for a response, and I'm giving you a response. We got to play better, and we got to play better at specific points. No, there's no looking for stepping out here and bringing in 20 new players between now and the bye. That's not the way it works. But I like the players that we have. You go around this league, and you will see a high recognition of the quality of players we've got. We should be able to not have happen to us Sunday with our players that we've got. We shouldn't have the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL and not having have 
more production, but he's got to have blocking. He's got to have guys to he's catch too. Have the routes run right. And the other thing he's got to do is it helps if he weren't playing somebody as strong as Detroit was Sunday. They were pretty strong. We hope we get a chance to show that uh, those type of things I just mentioned works. Jerry, did you have a problem with all the trick plays, pouring it on, the offensive lineman stuff that Detroit did? That, that was a lot of fun that you're having. You can do that when you've got a lot of time. Uh, you can do some things defensively uh, when you've got your other team reeling. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, they had a great time out there at our expense, and that's frustrating. So if you're asking me, was that fun or was it frustrating or was I aware of uh, some of the plays, the trick plays? I think somebody said they ran the tackle eligible four, five, six times. Well, that's rare. And you can have a lot of fun uh, running those plays, but it, uh, is a, it's symptomatic of something that we can correct. Jerry, Tyler Guyton didn't start this past Sunday. It was, it was Tyler Smith, uh, even though there wasn't an injury designation for Guyton. Is Tyler Guyton still the, the left tackle for you guys? Yes, he just wasn't ready to go. Now, that's a good question. That's a sound <laughs> question, one that I can answer. Okay, I've some, got meat on the bone. He wasn't able to go. He thought he could be ready. We thought he might be able to ready as close as game time. He wasn't ready to go. Jerry, running back wise, uh, Rico seemed to have his best game of the year against the Giants, but Zeke ended up with more carries. Why was that? Well, he had a good one against Pittsburgh too. And uh, I'm sorry, so Pittsburgh. I thought that uh, no, that's all right. Don't be sorry. We played the Giants in Pittsburgh. That's not a mistake. <laughs> but the point is that Rico is a violent runner. We like him as a runner. His biggest uh, uh, negative has been it's hard for him to stay uh, healthy. When he's healthy, we want him out there as much as we can. And we'd like to save Zeke as much as we can. Now, that wasn't why we just had 16 yards at some point in the third quarter the other day, at some point, at late, in the game, late for that much yards. That wasn't why we had it done. We were actually being stifled in the uh, fronts, in our offensive line. And they did a good job of stopping that run. And certainly we thought we could run, uh, throw the ball on them in their secondary, and they proved that that wasn't the case. Jerry, how impactful is this game coming up against San Francisco going to be on, on the remainder of your season? It's the seventh game on the schedule. Uh, this was an impactful game that we had out here Sunday. That'll be another impactful game. Uh, if you look at enough of it, enough of it. <sighs> Devontae Adams traded for a third round draft pick, third round draft pick, third round draft pick, another opportunity that has been wasted, squandered and screwed up by Jerry Jones and Jerry Jones is feeling the heat right now because of the backlash and he should feel even more backlash when you start to see that premier players Devonte adams went for how many first when he went to the raiders Devonte adams when you think of us trading a number one for amari cooper the fact that the joneses honestly believe the, 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 when you listen to their philosophy, let, let me let me see if I can. This video is getting kind of long winded for for my morning video, but there's so much that needs to be said here. When you think about their philosophy of we're going to take care of our big players, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, I believe you got to have a good quarterback, but having a good quarterback, you can look at Aaron Rodgers and say. Aaron Rodgers has been one of the best quarterbacks of the last 15 years. But Aaron Rodgers only won one Super Bowl. And when he did, he wasn't having 40, 50 TD passes that season. He had a great defense, and they could distribute the ball to multiple weapons. 
They had a good mix of veteran receivers and Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, and they had the Jordy Nelsons and things in there, and the Randall Cobbs. They had a competent running game. They were a good team all around, and that's what you have to have to win. That's why, I'm trying to be calm here, that's why San Francisco looks and says, well, we got Debo Samuels, who is a very physical, great receiver, who could also run the football out of the backfield. But they then, of course, have Brandon Ayuk and recognize, we need to figure out a way to keep that guy here, along with our great tight end and George Kittle. And even having those pieces right there, they recognize we need to have a running game as well. And that's why they go out and they got Christian McCaffrey. Now, Christian McCaffrey hasn't been playing this year. And you can see the difference of that team without having Christian McCaffrey in the running game. They're not doing as well. And on top of it, they have a great defense. And all of those things put together wasn't enough to win the Super Bowl last year. On the other side of the fence, we have Jerry and Stephen Jones. We're going to take care of the quarterback, and we're going to take care of our receiver. We're okay bringing back a running back who averaged 3.5 yards per run last year. And we're going to take a role player running back, and we're going to say he's going to be our lead dog. We're going to take an undersized running back who's more of a gadget guy and make him one of our running backs. And we're okay with that. This on a team that has some of the greatest running backs in history of football. And without those running backs, the Cowboys don't have five rings without Tony Dorsett and Emmitt Smith. But having even just those guys, you still had your Michael Irvins, your Drew Pearsons, your Alvin Harpers, your Jay Novacek's, and your great doomsday defense. It's not a mystery how the Cowboys won those Super Bowls. They were more talented than other teams. They went out. They would pick up a Deion Sanders. They would pick up a Charles Haley. I don't know what happened to that guy right there, but he's turned into the scared little biatch who's afraid to make a move. Instead of saying, we need a Charles Haley, we're going to do more with less. We're going to do more with less after telling us We're going all in. Jerry, we've seen all in before. We've seen all in before. We've seen you at least making competent moves where you spent a number one to get Amari Cooper, and nobody nobody got mad at you. Nobody. I don't think anybody out there criticized the Cowboys (coughs) for going out and getting Amari Cooper. I don't think any single person said, you're an idiot and I'm not going to come to the games anymore. I don't think anybody criticized you when you tried to get Greg Hardy, even though that one blew up in our face. I'm going to say what Leo always says, an Eagle fan. I want to see the activity. Your risky moves are going to the USFL players after they've just played a season and signing those guys your bold moves are making a trade with the giants for jordan phillips who you then cut your bold moves are let's sign a whole bunch of defensive linemen in their 30s past their prime i i i i even said this before i said i hope what we're doing with the defense is not 2020 again, which was we brought in Clinton Ha Ha Dix, safety, had some decent years, didn't make it out of training camp. We signed an aging Gerald McCoy who got injured before training camp or in training camp. We brought in Don Terry Poe, a big body that got even bigger and couldn't move off his fat ass, and he was injured when he came in here. And Emerson Griffin, which was probably the best of the lot. 
who ended up going back to Minnesota. You made all of these moves, spent that money, and our defense was the worst in the NFL. And here it is. You brought in Carl Lawson. You brought in Lenville Joseph. You brought in Jordan Phillips. And you work out guys who have literally been out of the NFL for a couple of years that didn't have much of a career to begin with. And you think or you sell to us that we are a Super Bowl caliber team. That, you know, this is all in. I like people feeling uncomfortable. Well, you know what? You got us all uncomfortable. You got all of us pissed off and sick of this shit. This is crazy. As a Cowboy fan right now, here's what you have to understand. Here's what you have to understand. <clears throat> I, I've, I, I can't leave the Cowboys. I can't leave them because of guys like Tom Landry and, and Roger Staubach and Tony Dorsett and Randy White, Ed Tuttle Jones, Harvey Martin, the Drew Pearsons, the Charles Haley's, the Michael Irvins. I can't leave those people behind and just say, I, I'm no longer a Cowboy fan because of what greatness those guys did. I can't. But you have to now go on from here on out with Jerry and Stephen freaking Jones as the owners of the Cowboys and understand we aren't winning Super Bowls. We aren't winning Super Bowls. It's not about that. It's about the glitz and glamour and hanging with your friends. And you're going to have to just take, you know, when we get the big win that's unexpected, you know, maybe we upset the San Francisco 49ers and we can be them boys for that week. But understand and tell that guy right there, that guy, Jerry Jones, until you change, it doesn't matter if you bring in Bill Belichick. That's just a PR move. That's to get some excitement. Oh, my God, we got Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, who the game has passed him by, who's not good at evaluating talent anymore. And you're going to rely on the guys that are saying that Jordan Phillips is an answer to our run-stopping problem. The problems we have, instead of them getting better, with the moves that the Joneses made, it's not a secret. I have been talking about the Cowboys running problems since Calais Campbell was a free agent in Arizona and saying, we need a lights out leader, defensive tackle. And I was told he was too expensive. He's too expensive. He's over the hill. And yet that guy... That guy, the very next year, had 14 and a half sacks, runner-up defensive MVP. That guy, NFL Man of the Year. That guy, still playing and still making plays and doing better than any of our guys right now on the defensive line. And you've had multiple times to get players like that. But we always hear, oh, <laughs> you know, we can't afford them. Derrick Henry, who literally, 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 begged the Cowboys to pick up the phone and call him, who already had a home in Dallas, bought a second one in Dallas. They wouldn't even entertain it, people. What does it cost to have a fun conversation on the phone? He might have said, you know what, Jerry? I want to come to the Cowboys. I want to win a Super Bowl, and I ain't worried about the money. I just want the damn ring. You can pay me $5 million dollars and take the rest of the money and make sure that we got all the pieces for Dak Prescott to go. He might have said that, but you will never know because you won't even freaking talk to the guy. You had Bobby Wagner, not this year, three years ago, who wanted to come here with Dan Quinn. You think if Bobby Wagner last year in the playoffs wouldn't have made a difference on that defense stopping the run? The opportunities have been there for the Cowboys, but unfortunately, they're too scared, too scared, too worried about spending a few dollars. Sick of this shit, man. I'm glad. I'm glad that, that 105, oh, look. <coughs> Sean and RJ, you, you my dogs now. You my dogs now. Keep the damn pressure on Jerry Jones. 
Keep the pressure on him because you had the opportunity. A third round, a third round pick. A freaking third round pick for Devontae Adams. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. It's only Tuesday and it's early in the day. It's a little too early to start drinking, but damn it, they just about got me there. They just about got me there. I'd say I hope you guys have a great day, but you know, <laughs> Weed and Boys <laughs> and Jerry Jones just keeps peeing in our Wheaties. <laughs> Jerry frickin' Jones. Come to my mind, we had a great run of it. Uh, he's a great coach, and I'm uh, proud to have him as a friend and proud to have had the times that we had. We we, uh, we just had a great experience. Can you answer Switch's question now? What? Do you think you could answer Barry's question now? I've never, I've never been able to know why. Uh, I'd like to